Hey everybody. So yesterday somebody sent me an interesting idea, which was how to create something like Steve Reich's drumming in Ableton Live. Uh, and basically the concept of this piece is he has two drummers playing the same thing in unison, uh, but then one drummer starts to play it slightly faster or slightly slower and than the other one. And over time, the phase of those patterns that they're playing uh, go out of phase with one another. Uh, and this is a technique that he uses in a few different ways in a few different places. So for this one, he's kind of written this score of this kind of looping drum pattern and just says to these percussionists, you know, one of them stays on the tempo that they're on and the other one, after some period of playing at exactly the same tempo as the first one, uh, starts to play at a slightly different tempo, like a very slightly different tempo so that over time, uh, they go out of phase. And he, I think, developed this concept from these other pieces that he did with tape, uh, like this one called Come Out, which I might have become aware of from Mad Villain, <laughs> from America's Most Blunted, a uh, track by MF Doom and Madlib. Uh, but anyway, with this one, uh, this one happened, I think, sort of by accident, where he had uh, two tape loops of somebody saying something and he had them both playing on tape machines that were set to play at the same speed. And they're panned hard left and right. Uh, and because the tape machines simply aren't capable of uh, playing at exactly the same speed, if you listen to it long enough, uh, they go out of phase. So I believe that that concept came from this piece and another one called um, It's Gonna Rain. And then he started to work with it as a sort of compositional tool within pieces like this one, drumming. So this person uh, sent me this message and says, hey, I would love to do this uh, in live. Specifically, the kind of drumming use case where you make a MIDI clip that has whatever pattern you want to use, and then you can actually uh, have one be slight, playing back slightly slower or faster than the other, and they go out of phase. Uh, so at first I thought that this would actually be possible just using the built-in uh, stretch tool here within live, because if you can make the clip, like if you can stretch or compress the clip so that it is uh, shorter or longer than the other one, then that should work. The problem though is that the resolution of this knob, it it's just not enough, it's just not fine enough, right? Like in order to get it to really slowly evolve over time, you need to stretch by way less than 1.1. Um, so what I did was made a MIDI transformer that will do that. So with this, basically we have much, much finer control. So you can see here, I have the grid set to 116 and this down here just tells us, uh, if I were to play this clip with another one directly next to it, um, at the, original speed, then it will take 39,000 bars for them to shift off by a 16th note. I could keep going like that. So now it's 300 bars, right? So way, way more fine control. So let's actually hear this. So I'm just going to play them first uh, with them in phase. And then I'm going to pause it and I'm going to do, I'll set this to like, let's say like this 300. And actually this will be per perceivable pretty quickly. So I'll start them again. So you can hear that phasing like an audio effect phaser. And you can see there's this indicator here that's telling us that this clip is actually a little bit longer than four beats, which is useful. Now we're starting to get kind of like a, what sounds like a short delay.
Now it really starts, it's sounding rhythmic. And one thing that's fun to do is to pan them like he did on the tape pieces. Headphones recommended. That's it. So this device is free. I put the link in the description down below. Go get it. Play with it. I hope you enjoy it. Let me know how it's going. Let me know if you have any other ideas. I love these ideas everybody's giving me. Um, they're so fun. So keep doing that. And I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye. Oh, there's something I forgot to add. So this device also moves the loop marker point, right? So in addition to kind of shifting the notes, it also moves the loop marker, which is convenient. Um, not to get too far into the details, but basically live does not make it that easy to do this and keep track of where the loop marker had been. So what I'm doing instead of, uh, like if I do this and I take the last note away here, it's not going to actually keep track of where the loop marker is. It's going to pretend like the loop marker is at the end of the last note. So you'll see that as I adjust this, we actually snap to the end of the last note there. So that's like kind of a weird thing that this does that I can't really work around without Ableton making a change to the MIDI tools. So the workaround, if you run into that problem and it's an issue for you, is just to like put something there, maybe give it a really low velocity, right? Put some dummy note there or put it at MIDI note zero, or just do something so that you have a note that kind of marks where the loop end should be. That's kind of the only like caveat. All right, have fun.